armour piercing arrowheads. There's a lot of myths surrounding these. They were used by the British or the English in the Hundred Years War and before and after that uh, against the French. And there's a lot of myths surrounding these and whether they did actually go through armour. They're quite a stubby, you know, stubby little point on the end of them with a four-sided taper on to create those sort of square corners which supposedly cut through the armour. Although there's a lot, like I say, there is a lot of myth surrounding these and whether they did actually go through or rather ricocheted off and then found a gap in the armour and went through that. But yeah, so there's a bit, there's a bit to them and also there's a socket on the other end which you just have to do that you know, you have to get that right, roll it up so it's all, you know, the right comb shape. And I'm using inspiration off the Mary Rose for these. So this was, that was the ship that sank uh, in the English Channel, I think it was. Uh, and there were loads of arrows and bows and things preserved on that. And in particular, lots of these bodkin, you know, armour-piercing arrowheads. So let's get on with it. To make these arrowheads, I'm going to use some 10 mil bar uh, and then create a 10 mil socket on one end and then the point on the other end and this is probably a little bit smaller than what these would have been originally I think the ones on the Mary Rose were half an inch at the socket and so that's a bit wider than 10 mil but it's you know for these 10 mils a bit easier for me to do for arrows as they are now as I make them with a, a a 9mm, 10mm shaft. So it's just a bit easier using 10mm, rolling up the 10mm something. this shape roughly forged out I'm going to take an angle grinder to it and just cut it to the correct profile just to get it all nice and neat ready to then be rolled up into that socket lock this bar on the anvil using this hold down and this will just keep this secure whilst I hammer on it so I'm gonna take that little you know spade like piece out and just hammer the very end of that onto here to begin the forging of the socket I find that this is quite a good way to get that you know the very tip of the socket rolled up at the start just to start it off and then we'll do it the rest of the way by hand.
Okay, so that's quite a little, you know, simple project. The important thing to note is that socket, really, that's the, that's the only hard part about it. You know, you just have to roll it up from the, the smallest section to the widest. If you start at the other end, it'll just be messy and won't work. But these were sort of traditionally made in England and other parts of the world. But it was, you know, the English longbow. And these were the arrows that were shot in them generally. There are lots of other arrowheads, which I'll probably do some more videos on, doing different styles and different types, if that's what you want, I don't know. But I, I enjoy making this, as this was sort of how I started in blacksmithing. The first ever thing that I made was a little copper arrowhead. And so this sort of, I haven't made them for quite a few years actually, so this is sort of taken me back to how I started blacksmithing and making these little, you know, almost artifacts of the past and how smiths would have made these almost on a day to day basis probably back in the day. Anyway, thank you for watching the video. If you want to see some more videos, I'll put one up there and subscribe if you want. If that is what you want to do, I don't know. Anyway, I'll see you soon.